So in the last section, we talked about um, collecting data and building models that are based on the, the observations. And uh, because we don't know the underlying truth of the model, we can build various kinds of models to fit exactly the same data. And so when you have data and you can fit more than one model to it, um, there's always uh, this, this, this challenge of, um, of selecting the best model of on, among all possible models. And uh, we call this general class of problems model selection. And it's a lot more general than just regression. It's a lot more general than any particular type of model that you build upon, um, upon your data. But it's really a, really a, a general philosophical point. Okay? And um, the, the question really is, given that we have more than one model, which one do we pick? Okay, And so last time, what we did uh, was use this idea of evaluating the error of the model by taking the difference between each data point and the model prediction, squaring that number, and uh, adding those all together to find the error. Okay? So, and this was a really sensible way of evaluating how well a model is doing to predict the data that we have. And we saw that as we increase the complexity of the data set, these models started doing a little bit better and better. Okay? But you can really take this to the extreme. right? So there might be a, a great intermediate complexity of the model that explains a lot of the data without being overly complicated. But how do we find that intermediate? And we all have this intuition that perhaps there's something going on where uh, there's the risk of overfitting. right? It may be tempting to add more and more models, more and more variables onto our model. Um, more parameters onto our model, fitting the data better and better. But that does not necessarily mean that it's actually a better model. And so what I'm going to tell you about um, is a, one of the cures for overfitting. And I think this is a really powerful idea because it generalizes really well to all kinds of different models, not just regression models, but models of all kinds. And it saves you from having, to, um, from having to, to, to argue about which model is best and whether or not you're actually overfitting the data in some way. Right? And the cure is validation. Okay? What does validation mean? So let's imagine that you go collect some data, and you come back to your laptop, and you uh, try to build a couple of models based on the data you just collected. Now, what is the use of these models? Right? So at the heart of this question of model selection is what is a model useful for? Right? Do you want it to look exactly like the data? Well, why don't you just have the data? Then you already have the data. So what do we want the model for usually is some task like prediction. Right? I want the model to, be to tell me that the next time I do exactly the same experiment with these parameters that I know, what's going to happen? Right? And so. The cure of validation, what I mean by validation, is that um, the assessment of how well the model is doing should not be based on the, the data that I use for training the, the model, but rather on new data that I collect. Okay? Its ability to predict what's going to happen in the next data set is really the correct way of assessing how well the model is doing. And this is a really important concept, so I'm going to write it down. Okay? The cure is validation, and what that means is that I'm going to assess each model using data that has not been used, not used in the learning. Okay? So let's go back to our simple example of five data points and fitting polynomials to it, and uh, I'll demonstrate what I mean. So, what I've done here is uh, shown you the same data that we were looking at before. In the, uh, the blue circles are the original data, the same data points. And what I've done is uh, the equivalent of going out to the field and collecting more data from the same place, just trying to collect more data. And uh, what I've done is um, generated the new data and plotted them as these red crosses on the same axes. Okay? So, uh, let's go back and look at the three different polynomial fits that we've made to the five dots and see what they look like on the same plot. So we can go back to our plot code um, and plot the three models on top of them 
and we can see that here's what they look like. Remember, there was the there was a line, there was a parabola, and there was the the magenta fourth row polynomial that went exactly through all five of our original data points. Okay, so. Next, what we're going to do is uh, instead of computing the error of each of these models, models one through three, based on the original data, these blue dots, we're going to actually evaluate exactly the same expressions just using the new data instead. So the expressions look very similar to what we had before, except uh, now that instead of, using, um, instead of using the old data, we're using x new, y new and x new. OK, so instead of y and x, which were the original five dots, we're going to use the, the red crosses instead. So I'm going to evaluate all three of these errors. And we can go back to our, uh, to our command window and take a look at what they look like. OK, so remember that uh, what happened before was that the linear model had a moderate amount of error. This is the linear model evaluated on the new data still has a moderate amount of error. This is the error of the quadratic model evaluated in the new data. The error actually got bigger this time, quite a bit bigger, actually, almost two, or two to three times as large as uh, the linear model. And if we look at the third error, this is the one that is the magenta line that basically went through all five original data points. We can see that the error here is no longer 0. It is an actual number that is comparable in the same order of magnitude as the other two errors. And furthermore, it is no longer the smallest one. Okay? So by this metric, if we're going to compare all three of these errors and use them to inform our choice of which model was the best one, the linear model wins. In addition, it happens to be the simplest possible one of these three. Right? So according to this metric, since we've done validation and assessed each model using data, new data that has no, been nowhere near the training process, we've been able to come to a very different answer about which model is the best model. Okay? So the other thing we have to be careful about here is uh, model selection process is always which one is the best among possibilities. It's basically impossible to ever say, I've found the best model of all possible models. Right? So it's always contrasting one model versus some other models. And so in here, what we can say is out of the three polynomial models, this one, the simplest one, the linear model, is the best one because it has the smallest validated error. We cannot say that this is the best model for the data. Right? All we can say is that it's better than the other two that we evaluated against. And um, this is uh, something that we can think about in general because it's, a it's, a, it's an issue that's um, pretty general, right? So these models don't have to be polynomial models. We can do this with models of all different kinds. It could be a um, it could be logistic regression. It could be some kind of classification. This idea of using validation as a way of assessing models, using data not used in the learning, is something that carries through for even much, much more complicated way of building models. And uh, it gives you a nice way of comparing models with different numbers of parameters. Right? Sometimes you can have models that have vastly different numbers of parameters, and it's always really hard to compare them because sometimes the more complicated model fits the data better, but only a little bit better. And you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe I should penalize this model for being more complicated, for having more parameters. So perhaps the simpler one, the more parsimonious one, is the correct answer, the one we actually want. Right? But it's really hard to quantify that in a way um, that is satisfying. People have tried. There's a variety of criteria out there, um, the various kinds of information criteria for evaluating the goodness of fit of different models by penalizing them for, different, uh, for increasing numbers of parameters. But as you start using them in more complex scenarios, you'll find that uh, oftentimes those different ways of evaluating and penalizing parameter numbers don't agree with each other, right? So you could pick one, and you know I've done that in the past. Um, but I think um, a more general, more data-driven approach to this problem of, uh, of overfitting and model selection is by using data that is not used in the learning.